Hi y'all, thank you for being here with me today. My name is Desmond. I wanted to do a micro lock video um, and sister lock video. It could be for both. Talking about the do's and the don'ts and how to keep your hair as healthy as your hair can be um, for your journey. I've had my locks for almost nine years. It'll be nine years this December. And uh, specifically December 19th and 20th, that is my lock anniversary. And I have just learned so much on this journey. Um, it's been filled with ups and downs. Most of, if not every single ups and down was my fault. Um, uh, I kind of put my hair through things rather than my hair putting me through things. Um, but I've really learned so much. I've been on both sides of having really healthy, beautiful locks and I've also been on the side of having very damaged locks. And so I just wanted to give tips uh, that I've learned on this journey to help others who have begun their journey. I just want to know how they can have the healthiest locks and the happiest locks they can. So let's get into the video. So, I have my journal right here. I'll be periodically looking down, just in case you are wondering like what I'm looking at. Um, yeah, it's my journal. So I like to start off this video doing the do's and then later on we'll get into the don'ts. So my number one do is water. Water, 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 H2O. Our hair needs water. Water is the most nourishing and moisturizing thing that you can give to your hair um there's nothing else more moisturizing than water and so the more water you give your hair the better your hair is going to be the happier and the healthier your hair is going to be water gives our hair nourishment it allows for our hair to grow it cleanses our hair it gives it moisture and I know people are always talking about water, make sure that you water your hair, make sure that you drink enough water, but it cannot be reiterated enough. Water is so important. But something that I want to note here is that not every water is made equally. And so, you know, like ocean water is different than the water that you find in a Dasani bottle or Fresh water is going to be different than the water that you find in your tap, your faucet, or your shower head. And so having good quality water is going to make a difference in the quality in the health of your hair. I recommend staying away from like tap waters because tap waters have a lot of cleaning agents and cleaning minerals such as like chlorine and then that can cause damage to your hair. It can cause dryness, it can cause brittleness. And so I would rather go for a water like a spring water that just has the natural elements and minerals that are found in fresh water itself. Um, using rose water. Rose water can be found at like a, a natural health store near you. You can also make your own rose water. I love making rose water. And then you can also use like you know, herb infused waters, putting uh, rosemary in your water, putting peppermint in your water. And those herbs are actually gonna help to promote hair growth and hair thickening as well if you're someone that deals with uh, thinning of hair or you're someone that deals with hair loss. And so yeah, making sure that the water that you use is good quality is going to make a difference uh, to the health of your hair. The number two do is do use light products. And so I'm someone that prefers not to use products on my hair. I did use products on my hair in the past and I went a bit overboard and caused a pretty good amount of damage to my hair. So um, I would recommend really only using light products, using products that are specifically made for people that have sister locks and micro locks. Um, there is a brand called Made for Locks that has a bundle kit for micro locks and sister locks. It has shampoo in there, it has sprays, it has mousses, and they're made 
to be light and to be airy and not cause a lot of weight on your locks. If you want to use oils on your locks, I'd recommend using oils like jojoba oil or argan oil or sweet almond oil, oils that when they're room temperature are liquid, rather than using an oil like um, coconut oil. And I love putting coconut oil on my body. I love co cooking with coconut oil, but coconut oil is an oil that is hard at room temperature. And when you put that in your hair, when you put that in your locks, it can cause buildup and it can be really, really, really difficult to rinse out. Um, if you have loose textured hair, it's a bit easier to uh, rinse that out, but when you have locks, it can get stuck inside of the locks. And so sticking with an oil that is going to be easier to rinse out is going to be better and that's going to be your more liquid oils. The number three of do's for your lock is do find a retightening schedule that is conducive to your lock thickness and size. And so everyone's sister locks and micro locks are different. Um, some people have really thick hair, really coarse strands, and this uh, allows for them to have denser and thicker, and thicker micro locks or sister locks. Whereas some people might have finer hair and thinner hair, and this is going to cause their lock to be skinnier and finer as well. And so depending on the thickness, the fineness of your hair is going to have a big role in how often or how infrequently you can retighten your hair. And so someone that has thick, dense locks can go a longer period of time without retightening their hair, where someone has finer, thinner locks, they can't go that long. I'm someone that has fine strand hair, and I've noticed that with my locks, I can't really go too, too, too long without retightening my hair or else it will create for thinness in my locks. So I can go probably as far as like 10, even upwards of 12 weeks. I do not recommend that. I don't do it, don't do it. But I, I can go that far. <laughs> I can go that far and I have gone that far before. But anything more than that, I've dealt with my locks coming out, uh, my locks thinning really badly. So don't do that. Stay within um, a good range. Uh, I would recommend that six to eight weeks. That is a great range. Um, maybe if you've got really thick, coarse hair and your locks are bigger, you can go, you know, upwards of 10 to 12 weeks. But if you've got like finer, thinner hair, I really recommend staying in that six to eight and not going any longer than that because you will uh, deal with a bit of breakage or thinning to your lock. The number four do's of micro locks and sister locks is maintaining a healthy diet. So making sure that you're eating your protein, making sure that you're eating your good carbohydrates, making sure that you're getting your fats in are all gonna be really vitally important to having healthy hair. Our hair can only be as healthy as our bodies are. And so if we're not giving our body the nourishment that our body needs, unfortunately, our hair is not going to get that either. And so making sure that, you know, you're feeding your body good nourishing food to keep your body healthy and happy, that is going to transfer to your hair and allow for your hair to also be healthy and happy. Number five do is maintaining a good mental health and so this is something that can be a little bit harder for folks because at times it, it can really be uncontrollable you know for someone that does have or live a very high stress life or someone that does deal with depression it's not as easy as just saying no to it and then boom it's out of your life it's not as easy as just deciding that you're going to eat differently or something like that um, it's, it's a bit harder and it's not always in your control. Um, but trying to just make sure that you are giving your, your body and your mind time to feel enjoyment, to feel pleasure and happiness, to feel rest is really important. 
because when you are in a high stress state, that can cause damage to your hair. It can cause hair loss. It can cause hair thinning. And so um, making sure that, that you're just taking care of your mental health is really important to making sure that your locks are healthy because it does show. And so if that means, you know, meeting with the therapist or making sure that you just cut out time in your life to do the things that you love so that you can remember how precious life is, is important to having healthy and happy locks. Locks are really easy to maintain as long as you are doing the things that I said earlier in the do's, your hair is going to just flourish and be beautiful, I promise. Now, if you're doing some of the things that I'm about to say in the don'ts, this could cause a bit of problems. And so let's get into the don'ts, what I do not recommend to do if you want your locks to be healthy and happy. Number one, do not, is do not use heavy products. So heavy products are just, there's no place for heavy products with sister locks or micro locks. Our locks, because they are so skinny, um, and if you have fine hair too, this, this, you know, if you have fine hair and thin locks and they're also skinny, that weight of heavy products is just going to weigh your hair down so much and it can cause a lot of tension at the base at the root of your hair and it can pull and that can cause breakage and that can cause thinning of the lock another thing that um heavy products can do is that they can actually soften the lock and cause the lock to unravel which is something that i dealt with a lot um it was a few years ago. I had always wanted to color my hair, um, but I didn't want to cause damage. And I knew that there wasn't a possible way for me to color my hair without causing damage. And I ended up coming coming across these things called hair waxes, like, um, like color hair waxes. And they had a pretty brown color. And I was like, oh, I'll just use that and then consistently wash it out and that would be good. And so I would take it and I would put it in my hair and I'll show like a little picture right here of what it looked like. It was so pretty, I really loved it. But I noticed that like, I wasn't really able to wash it all out, that like it still would like leave remnants in my locks. And after a period of time, my locks actually started to soften and unravel and, and come out. And oh my goodness, I remember brushing my hair and just like, lumps of my locks breaking off and it was so oh my god it like hurts to even think about it again um but yeah i just recommend staying away from heavy products don't do it <laughs> there's no place for it with sister locks and micro locks maybe if you have thicker coarser hair that's something that you can do but if you've got fine thinner hair I really would not play with it. It's Russian roulette and I just would not, I would not do it. Which goes into my number two of uh, don'ts and that is don't dye your hair unless you have spoken with a um, loctician, a hair professional, a hairstylist who knows how to dye your hair in a healthy way. This is something that I also did uh, after I um, used the hair waxes, I was like, fuck it, I'm just going to lighten my hair um, using like hydrogen peroxide and baking soda because I felt that it was less harmful than bleach, um, but it still caused a lot of problems with my hair, a lot of dryness, a lot of breakage. Um, so yeah, and, uh, it still makes me so sad. But yeah, please don't be like me. Do not, do not lighten your hair, do not bleach your hair, any of those things without consulting a professional 
who knows how to lighten your hair in a safe way, in a way that's gonna cause the least amount of damage possible. So my number three don't that I do not recommend is don't use an excessive amount of heat on your locks. Um, I, for a very short period of time, did flat iron my locks. I would have like these fluffy ends that I didn't like. And so I would kind of uh, straighten those out and not understanding that like, just because my hair is locked doesn't mean that it's like invincible to, to heat damage. And so luckily my hair did not damage. Um, I stopped doing that before it could. And my senses came to me and I was like, Dudlin, what are you doing? But yeah, I just wouldn't recommend using heat on your locks. Um, unless it's like a low setting heat or you're underneath the blow dryer or something like that. I, I still do things like that, but I don't put like an excessive amount of heat on my locks. Um, so yeah, I would stay away from that because your hair can, can, you know, be, uh, be victim, I guess, of, um, of heat damage. And then my number five, uh, don't of micro locks and sister locks is do not use or put your hair in like tight styles. And that also goes for retightenings. I recommend not doing a super tight retightening. Having your hair in really, really, really tight styles can cause a lot of tension on the root of your hair. When you have tight styles, it pulls at the root and that tension can cause a lot of breakage, can cause a lot of thinning and hair loss. And so um, I recommend staying away from really tight styles, really tight ponytails, and also super tight retightenings. When you retighten your hair, I would just retighten it to the point where you don't have a lot of new growth still, but at the same time, it's not like super tight and pulling um, and giving you a headache, a migraine. <laughs> Uh, I've definitely had retightenings to the point where, you know, I felt a whole headache for like a week after and it was just so painful. Um, so don't do that. It just causes a lot of tension. It hurts. <laughs> just stay away from doing um, really, really, really tight styles. Then my number, I think this is my number six. My number six don't and this is my last don't is do not compare your hair to another person's hair. We all have our own individual, unique, special, and beautiful locks. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with having a hair crush or admiring someone else's hair, but when you have the expectation that your hair is gonna look like another person's hair, you don't get to appreciate the beauty of your own hair. And when you have those expectations, it can, it can cause you to um, neglect your hair. It can cause you to do things to your hair that are not helpful to having your hair being healthy and happy. And so making sure that you honor your hair, um, making sure that you love your hair, that you appreciate your hair, that you figure out what is good for your hair rather than wanting your hair to be like another person's head of locks is really, really important. Um, that's also going to stop you from taking your locks out too. Uh, you know, sometimes we can look at other people's locks and want them to be that way and when they're not, it can make us upset or frustrated and then we start doing things and taking them out or whatnot. And yeah, so making sure that you love your locks, that you give to your locks, that you honor your locks is really important for you to have a healthy head of locks in a long journey with locks. So that is the end of my video. I hope that that was helpful. Locks are very low maintenance. They're low maintenance. And the least you do to your locks, the least you mess with them, the more prosperous they're going to be, the happier they are going to be. Allow them to be, allow them to live, and they are going to thank you for that. So yeah, um, as I said, I hope that this is you know, helpful to anyone that is uh, growing their locks, that is on their journey. 
Um, or if you're thinking about being on the journey and you're wanting to know what the uh, maintenance of it is. So yeah, thank you and have a wonderful day y'all. Bye.